What's up guys, Nathan here, and today I'm gonna to give you the proven poker tournament strategy that most people still don't know about. Let's jump right into it. All right guys, this is my proven three-step process to start winning much more consistently in poker tournaments. You're never gonna win every single poker tournament. I think most of you guys already know that, but hopefully the tips, the three tips in this video should get you having more success more consistently, so let's jump into it. Tip number one is you need to play loose and aggressive. Now guys, I know this is gonna fly in the face of a lot of these so-called, you know, expert advice out there these days, the common wisdom to just, you know, play your cards, wait for your pocket aces, wait for your pocket kings. But guys, I can tell you from experience, from having played this game professionally for over 10 years, this is absolutely a losing strategy. In fact, I will say that if you are afraid of the amount of money that you're playing for, maybe you're playing in a $100 tournament, $1,000 tournament, $10,000 tournament, and that one of those amounts of money means a lot to you, I would honestly say that you probably shouldn't be playing in those tournaments. You want to be playing in a tournament that you can feel relaxed, loose, and play for the win. And that's exactly what we're talking about here. So the biggest reason why people don't have success is because they're playing too tight and fearful. They don't get involved in the action because what you guys need to know is that winning a poker tournament is all about building up a big stack so that later on in the tournament, you can consistently strike the fear of God into them, as we're going to discuss in a second here, because the number one thing that is always on everybody's mind in a tournament is the fear of elimination. It's putting their tournament life on the line. And when somebody else has a much bigger stack than you, and if you're playing live poker, you can physically see the massive amount of chips in front of them, you're going to alter your play. You're gonna be afraid of getting into a big pot versus that person, and therefore you're gonna play sub-optimally, and they're gonna be able to run you over and get away with all sorts of nonsense, and that's actually how most poker tournaments are won. So guys, early on in a poker tournament, you need to start playing a lot more like a cash game. And I'm gonna talk about the exact hands in a second here. What you guys need to remember is that in the early stages of a tournament, MTT is a multi-table tournament, just another name for tournaments, you usually have a starting stack size of 80 big blinds, 100 big blinds. So very similar to a cash game. So there's a lot of play on the flop turn and river, unlike later on in the tournament. And that is why you wanna get in there and mix it up. You want to, especially early on, try to build a big stack. You don't wanna sit around just waiting for strong hands because guys, everybody gets dealt the same amount of good hands, bad hands, and great hands in poker. You know, if you're just constantly sitting around waiting for the nuts, you're not exercising any edge. You're, you're just simply playing a game of bingo like everyone else, hoping you get your ace king or something so you can get your double up. It's just not a winning strategy, guys. All right, so tip number two is to abuse the bubble. So hopefully Hopefully you have built up a chip stack through the early stages, like I just talked about, by playing a lot of speculative hands, by putting a lot of pressure on people. So the bubble is when you can really take this to the next level. Now the bubble, for those of you guys who do not know, is the point in the tournament when the first payouts occur. And this is when people get even more tight and fearful because they're sitting there, you know, they enter the tournament for $100 and the first payout will be $150 or $200. And that means a lot for them, you know, they played for five hours, eight hours, and they want to get their money back. But guys, come on, making a hundred dollars for eight hours of play. I mean, is that even minimum wage? I mean, we're not there for this. We're there to win the tournament. That's where all the real money is. So many top pros in tournaments actually literally win the tournament right here by raising or re-raising with all sorts of speculative hands like ace three of diamonds, eight six of clubs, queen seven of hearts, or even offsuit stuff like king 10 offsuit. Guys, the bottom line is you need to get in there and mix it up. And especially if you have a big stack at this point, which hopefully you do, you want to target the medium stacks. And the medium stacks, what I'm talking about, are stacks that are around between 20 big blinds and say around 40 big blinds on the bubble. You should have a big stack of around 80 big blinds, and then there's going to be a bunch of short stacks that are sitting there with 5 big blinds, 10 big blinds. Don't shove light on them. And I should say that most of the action around the bubble, because the stacks are more shallow now, a lot of the action is going to be pre-flop. So it's going to be somebody races and somebody else goes all in. So you don't want to be targeting the short stack because they're just going to call you with their ace 10 or whatever. You want to come over the top and make big plays against the medium stacks, the guys with 30 big blinds, because they have the most to lose on the bubble. They don't want to go out right now because they know that they can literally just sit there and fold their way to a min cash once all the short stacks eventually get a 
eliminated. So guys, this is literally the bread and butter of any tournament poker pro will tell you that this is literally where you can win the entire tournament. By the way, in my brand new elite poker training university, I have an entire workshop showing you exactly what ranges to raise on the bubble and in the early stages as well with charts, dozens of cheat sheets, hundreds of examples, and so on over 17 hours of advanced training. I will include links to that in the description below, but let's move on to point number three to start dominating poker tournaments, and that is to dominate the final table. Guys, please, if you take one thing from this video, always remember, always, always remember, all of the money in a tournament is in the final three places, first, second, and third. Nobody plays tournaments for 17th place money, ninth place money, or even sixth place money. Almost every single modern poker tournament has a structure where they give the vast, overwhelming amount of the prize pool to the people who finish in first, second, or third. So guys, you need to always be playing for the win. And you probably see this as a theme of my tournament strategy at this point is I do not play tight and fearful like other players. And yes, this does mean that I get eliminated early a lot more than other players. I also get caught in bluffs and have egg all over my face a lot more than other players. But guys, that's okay because I understand that a truly successful strategy for tournaments is all about giving yourself as many shots at hitting that big score because that's the real difference maker in tournaments. Guys, nobody gets rich in tournaments or, or plays for a living by making min caches. They make it by winning the poker tournament. And that's also where you get all the accolades, by the way, sponsorship deals and so on that accrues even more. You win a big major poker tournament, all of a sudden you're gonna have people reaching out to you, looking to throw money at you to, you know, put your name on this poker site or uh, book deals, whatever. So there's a lot of ancillary benefits as well that come by being a successful poker pro. Nobody remembers the guy or girl who finished 19th. They remember the person who won. So my final piece of advice, guys, is please don't make deals. Once again, this is gonna fly in the face. Most of the so-called experts say these days, please do not make deals at the final table unless you are literally playing for life-changing money. This is usually gonna be millions of dollars for most people, you know, i.e. the main event of the World Series of Poker, for example. Guys, it's just absolutely not worth it. The vast majority of poker tournaments that you enter, you're gonna get eliminated early or in the middle stages or something like that. And therefore, once we get to the final table, we have to make sure that we get the absolute maximum value, that we try our best to win the entire tournament and get the lion's share for ourselves. Guys, you wanna be greedy at the final table because it doesn't come around very often. Guys, in poker, you don't get ahead by, you know, singing kumbaya with everyone holding hands and say, hey, let's make a deal and uh, just share all the money. Guys, please don't do that. It's okay to be a contrarian sometimes in poker, even if people don't like you, even if they say some nasty things in the comment section or at the table. It's okay, guys, because you are here to maximize your success, your winnings. That's a whole point of poker. And so if you are in a position to win the tournament, just politely say, no, thanks, guys. I don't want any deals. I'd rather keep playing. And the beautiful thing about poker tournaments is a deal needs unanimous consensus. If one person says no, know we have to keep playing always play for the win guys in poker tournaments play for nothing else and i think you're going to have a lot more success like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and also if you want to know my complete strategy for crushing cash games tournaments zoom every type of poker make sure you have a copy of my free poker cheat sheet that'll be the top link in the description below thanks a lot for watching guys i hope some of these tips helped you i will catch you next time